Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. A vicious terror attack in Chattanooga, Tennessee. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. Now, throughout the evening, things are breaking. Information is coming in. So we are have to be nimble here. We will give you the information as we get it. But anything could happen at any time. It all began about 1045 this morning, Eastern Time. Police say 24-year-old Mohammed Abdulaziz opened fire on two military recruiting stations, killing four Marines, wounding a female Navy sailor, a police and a police officer. The sailor is in surgery tonight. Witnesses report the shooter did not enter the buildings. Rather, he fired from outside. Dozens of shots were heard. Reports say Abdulaziz was trapped in the woods after a chase, was killed by law enforcement. We're awaiting further details on that. It's pretty murky right now, but that's the initial report. Now, here's what we know about the terrorist. He graduated from the University of Tennessee in 2012 with a degree in engineering. We believe he's an American citizen born in Kuwait, not been confirmed yet. His father works for the city of Chattanooga, his family middle class. On the victim front, we are awaiting the identities of the four murdered Marines pending the notification of their families. The FBI now in charge of the investigation and the Associated Repress is reporting that authorities raided the shooter's house, taking two women into custody. We are also awaiting more word on that situation. So you can see there's a lot in play. Earlier today, President Obama said this. I'd ask uh, all Americans to pray uh, for the families who uh, are grief-stricken at this point. And uh, I want everybody to understand that uh, we will be um, thorough and prompt in figuring out exactly what happened. In just a few moments, three Fox News correspondents will report on what the investigation will entail. But there is one sensational report tonight that I have to mention, even though it is not exactly clear whether it's accurate. Apparently, a tweet from an ISIS-based source announced the terror action before it actually happened. Catherine Herridge is on that story. will join us shortly. If ISIS isn't involved, even indirectly, all hell is going to break loose in this country. For months, those savages have been encouraging people on the net to attack Americans. As you know, the Obama administration's response to the growing menace of ISIS has been long-term, not an urgent campaign. Expect that to change if Mohammed Abdulaziz is linked to that terror group. There have been a number of terror attacks on American soil since 9-11, as you know. The Shoe Bomber, 2001, Fort Hood Attack, 2009, Boston Marathon Bombing, 2013, just to name the most infamous. But there has not been an attack by ISIS that has succeeded. On a night like this, when the nation faces the fact that four Marines were killed on American soil, restraint, restraint is necessary. The FBI will quickly gather the facts, and after they are presented to the public, then and only then, should a calculated reaction take place. I firmly believe President Obama is making a major mistake in the tentative nature of his response to ISIS, and I've said that many times. I hope Mr. Obama's strategy will change because ISIS is a direct threat to all Americans, even if it turns out they were not involved in the terror attack today. And that's a memo. Now for the top story tonight, let's go to Chattanooga, Tennessee, where Fox News correspondent John Roberts has the very latest. Did I leave anything out, John? Uh, you didn't leave a whole lot out. Uh, you've got most of it nailed, Bill, but there are a few developments that have happened recently that we can tell you about. First of all, outside of the NOSC, the Navy Operational Support Center, which also doubles as a Marine Reserve Center, uh, a number of uh, light modules with generators just went in, hauled in by a uh, convoy of black Suburbans. We assume that these are FBI light units that will be used to illuminate the area. The investigation likely will continue well into the night. Just to show short time ago, a Marine in dress blues rolled up to the front gate here where police are diligently keeping anyone out and delivered a folded up flag to one of the officers who was standing guard there, then hugged his wife and uh, continued on with the family, obviously wanting to show his respects. We're learning a lot more, too, about Mohammed Yusuf Abdulaziz. We understand that he went to the University of Tennessee here at Chattanooga, got a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. The Tennessee Valley Authority confirmed to me a short time ago that he did, in fact, intern there for a while, 2009, 2010. He was on the wrestling team in high school. He also enjoyed mixed martial arts, uh, did some cage fighting 
for a while. And uh, in, additionally, earlier this year, he was arrested on a DUI charge, according to the Times Free Press of Chattanooga. And again, a report uh, carried in that newspaper, which has got a phalanx of correspondents fanned out across the area. Uh, they were getting notification from people here in Chattanooga, Chattanooga who knew him in high school, sent in pictures of his, of his high school yearbook, in which he wrote beside his picture, quote, my name causes national security alerts. What does yours do? And by looking further at the aerial photographs that were taken of the car as it sits in the parking lot outside of that uh, reserve center, Bill, it's clear that Abdul Aziz crashed through the front gates because he carried those gates bent and twisted on the front of his car all the way into the parking lot where he stopped the car, and that's where it appears he opened fire. Now, what we have not been able to ascertain is if he, if he did here, as he did at the recruiting center on Lee Highway, shoot from his car or if he actually, actually exited from his vehicle. Where he was shot dead, if he was shot dead or took his own life, unclear at this point, but we have heard those reports, Bill, that he was chased into the woods by police officers who were in hot pursuit after he left that recruiting center location and may have been killed in the woods, though the aerial photographs earlier today did show that there was a body in the parking lot, so that is still unclear. We okay. understand Bill Killian, who was the U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Tennessee, may hold a press conference later on this evening and fill in some of those details. Okay. Uh, what kind of a gun did he use? Do we know? We don't know the exact uh, model of the gun, but from eyewitness accounts, talking with uh, military experts, it sounds like it may have been some sort of military-style rifle simply because of the number of bullets that he was able to fire in rapid succession. People at the recruiting center about seven and a half miles away down on Lee Highway say that they heard 25 to 30 shots. And as you can see in those pictures of the front of the recruiting center, there are a lot of little black cones that are marking where the brass, the shell casings, landed. And it's clear also from those pictures and you can sometimes bill do a lot of good reporting simply by looking at what's in front of you it's clear that he was very close to the front door because some of those shell casings landed at the foot of the sidewalk sure. right in front of that door now um there was a sergeant who uh was in one of the recruiting centers we might again say there were two separate shootings two um and I, what i've been told is the the marines were killed at the second is that correct john they were they, okay. they were killed at the location right across the street from me at that, that so-called NOS, the Navy uh, uh, Operational uh, Support Center. And the naval officer, uh, not officer, but the, the Navy sailor who's in surgery tonight, she was there as well. And a police officer, uh, I guess, got shot in the leg and he was treated and released. So the first, the we, fir we 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 don't ahead. we we don't know where this we don't know where the sailor, a woman who is in surgery now, according to Pentagon officials, was shot. We don't know if it was at the recruiting center or if it was here. But the police officer was shot here in that exchange of gunfire. He received a minor wound to the ankle. Uh, the female sailor obviously wounded a lot more seriously. Okay, the first location is seven miles away from the second location where the Marines were killed. It is. Uh, so he it opens is. fire. And, and when you when, and go ahead. And I was just going to say, Bill, that when you look at the locations compared to where it's believed he lived, which is about five miles that way as the crow flies in Hickson, Tennessee, on Colonial Way Circle, it looks like he, he could have exited his, his home in his neighborhood, come down Highway 153, got off 153 right near the recruiting center, opened fire there, and then traveled the seven miles along the Amnicola Highway here to get to this, uh, right. this reserve center. Now, we talked to a fellow who, who has a friend who works just about right where we're standing who said that earlier today he was driving this way as the suspect was coming this way. The suspect nearly hit him as he made a high-speed U-turn and ducked into the uh, the area here. Now, this, this is an entrance to a park. It's the entrance to River Park, but the facility is kind of part of that property, got it. if you will. You've got to go into the park to get to that facility. What's interesting, Bill, is that the Defense Department told us that at no time was the shooter on, on federal property. But it's clear he was right in the parking lot, so he was, in fact, on federal property okay. after well, crashing we'll through that front out. Uh, John, I want you to stand by in case anything happens down there. Thank you very much. All right, Next on the rundown.